And one of my favorite, I just, I, I don't even know uh, if I have a question about this, but I just have to tell you, one of my favorite books growing up was Saturday Night at Moody's Diner. Yeah, yeah. How did, I guess, how did that all uh, come about? You know, that's a very interesting story, Dan, because what happened was I was doing my first television special for Maine Public Broadcasting. It was 1983 at the State Theater of Maine at Lakewood, and it was a sold-out show, and I had planned to do a certain, it was a year after, Mar a year and a half after Marshall died, and I was just getting my sea legs and realizing people would come to see me if Marshall wasn't there. And it was a great, it was just a magical night. And I realized I could ad lib. They were just, everything I said, they were just laughing at. And so I had <laughs> that this. That never happens to me, by the way. <laughs> but I, and I, and they were filming this for television. And I had this punchline, which I had never told the story before. But I decided to just ad lib. So I ad libbed this thing, nine and a half minute story called Saturday Night at Moody's Diner, where you go down the coast of Maine and you show up at Moody's Diner and blah, blah, blah. And it's got this punchline. And that became, <laughs> and you know the punchline, and it became, but it became my signature story. The album sold, I don't know, tens of thousands of copies. The book sold tens of thousands. Steve King wrote a, a great introduction yeah. to the book. Uh, it had a life of its own, and it was just an ad lib, okay? But I must tell you a funny story about this. So in 1985, a couple of years later, I was down at Ellsworth at the Chamber of Commerce dinner, and I couldn't get off stage without doing Saturday Night at Moody's Diner. <laughs> and of course, you know, the final line is that talks about a 48-second fat. That's what it is, and okay? That's it. And I don't, I, I am scrupulous about, I don't use off-color material, I don't, but really, if that's off-color, you've been asleep on the couch since 1952, all right? So, okay, so I did the story, everybody went crazy, I got back to my office in Waterville, and that Thursday, as the, the Thursday afternoon, uh, the phone rang, and it was the radio station in Ellsworth. They said, what are you going to do about Russ Wiggins' editorial? Well, Ru J. Russell Wiggins had just ru bought the Ellsworth American, all right? And he used to be, have the Washington Post. He was a big guy. You know, anyway, and he had written, a, apparently, an editorial I hadn't seen saying how I had offended people. I had offended. Well, I was there, and nobody was offended, but he <laughs> took offense. <laughs> So they asked me to respond. I said, I don't want to go there with Russ Wiggins. I just, it just, I don't want to get in that. But then they said, please, you have to say something. Blah, blah. I said, call me back five minutes before, you know, the, the airtime. And if I can think of something, I'll put it, I'll tape it. So they called back, and I had thought about it. And I said, okay, this is what I would say to Russ Wiggins. <laughs> he says he took offense. Well, when it comes to offense, there are two aspects. You can give it, and you can take it. I have done my very best not to give it, and if he took it, he did it on his own recognizance. <laughs> I it. like it. Yeah, that was. And <clears throat> forgive me for saying this, but I truly believe 99% of Americans find flatulence funny. Well, it, whether it, they want to admit it, it or not, and they did in ancient Greece. So I mean, far be it from me. I'm just passing it. I have a one-year-old. She finds flatulence <laughs> oh, funny now. Very nice. Yes. I like that. Very nice. <laughs>